You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hello, hello, and welcome from the Drone You studio. You're watching another epic episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. Very well done. My name is Rob, and you are listening to episode number 630. And we are so thankful that you're hanging with us today, as Definitely. always. Had to throw a little Dano in there. I caught that little bit of Dano right there. <laughs> he kind of morphed so into Dano. So good to see him. He is so cool. He is like cool. One of my favorite guys. Got it. Can't even joke about that. Anyway, guys, thank you for uh, joining us for another show. If you have a question, go to askdroneu.com. If you'd like to give us a review on iTunes, Stitcher, Overcast, or wherever you listen to shows, please do that so other people can find us as well. Also, we are looking for content creators. So if you think you've got what it takes, then email support at the droneu.com with some of your footage and the t content you would like to create. I'm sure a lot of you know DroneU is massively expanding, and we would love to bring some of you guys on board. Now, I've already reached out to some people, Rob, but I just wanted to leave the invite open because that's okay. kind of how you are. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> with some adjustments to the approach, but that's okay. <laughs> if, <laughs> if, as in knowing that he's going to do that, not. If you do, just know that we might not get back to you right away. Yeah. So be patient with us. Totally. Um, but feel free to reach out. Actually, we test you. How long can you be patient for? <laughs> 12 years. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> that, was, that was a bad joke. <laughs> anyway, let's get to the question, Rob, because I'm sure some people are really interested in, in discussing how viable really is the 3DR Solo. Um, it, it's been interesting. We've been seeing a lot of fluctuation in accessory prices. Yeah. Uh, we're seeing a lot of issues with uh, people struggling with the DJI uh, no-fly zones and ghost TFRs, mm -hmm. and the process to, to fly in those areas is not working. And just and the lack of the open source option, mm -hmm. right? That's actually a really nice aspect of 3DR. It is. Um, so... Although 3DR, we're not sure where they are right now and what they're doing, but we know um, Brian from National Park Service, who's the head of the UAS division there, was here this weekend mm -hmm. at the fly-in. And I'm really bummed I didn't get a chance to talk to him. I kind of want to go fly to certain people and dis discuss things with them because I sure. think it would be so cool to have him on the show. But they're using 3DR products because they can't use DJI products. Right. Um, and it's if you're not familiar with why, um, uh, I think it was an embargo a long, long, long time ago about using uh, certain products for government use. You can only use products from certain countries, and China is not on that list. So yep. um, so there is very real power in using a 3DR drone, but should you use the Solo or should you build your own? Let's hear the question, Rob. Hi, my name is Jeff with Redbeard Studios, and I've got a drone business startup question for you. My son and I have been looking to uh, start a little venture together. It's something he really loves doing. I like doing it too. So we thought, you know, let's give it a try. Having listened to your podcast, it's obvious that you feel that the DJI 4 Pro is the no-brainer drone to start off with. And I've even heard you say that drones like the Solo aren't an option. And I'm imagining that's because they've pulled out of the consumer market. However, recently, several retailers have been having big closeout sales on them just to get them out of stock, and we were able to pick up two of them from a major retailer uh, as certified refurbished units with full warranties for $170-some dollars plus $15 shipping. Add in $50 uh, per unit for a gimbal, another $250 per unit for a GoPro 4 Black, and I'm looking at $500 per bird for a prosumer-grade drone that can shoot 4K, plus all the other features that the Solo has. Uh, one of the people that have left uh, 3DR has released an aftermarket app uh, called Solex uh, for $30 that really brings to life all the features it should have had. There's, you know, you've been talking about you know, supporting or going with products that have a huge uh, community behind them, and 
from what I've seen, there is a very active community behind the 3DR, especially because it was built as an open sourced drone. So there's a lot of upgrades and stuff that can be made to it. And I'm wondering if you think we can be competitive, at least in the entry to mid-level markets, for real estate and other low-end uh, inspection kind of stuff, agriculture, flying you know, this kind of drone. I uh, appreciate your input and plan to sign up. Thanks again for your time. As always, shine on. I think you pretty much answered your own question, Jeff. It sounds like you're going to go for it, which is great. Right? Yeah. I mean, make it happen. Yeah. No, I think, uh, first of all, if he's doing government contract work, then he's got a competitive advantage there because he's using 3DR. Um, if he's going to use the solo, though, I'm going to recommend, a, uh, I think it's called Pew Productions. Uh, I think it's a 14 millimeter lens. So you get a rectilinear lens on the GoPro. So the image is much better. Mm. You don't get that weird GoPro look. Um which if they do that, then I think that they can absolutely be competitive. They can still do mapping missions and whatnot. They can still do NDVI missions if they have an NDVI filter mm -hmm. or if they have a special GoPro that they can put on there. Um, personally, though, I would recommend if you're going to use 3DR, just take a PixHawk 2 and build your own drone because you're going to get a whole lot more out of it. What would something like that cost, though? Because one of the reasons for this is that he was able to get into these oh, for it's gonna 500 bucks each. Oh, yeah, it's going to cost a whole lot more. In which case, you might as well go back to the P4 Pro. Well, it depends. If he's going to do that government contract work and he's going to use something other than sure. a Chinese manufacturer, then, you know, now you know how I feel about PixHawk. There are so many things that can go wrong with PixHawk. Um, we had five PixHawk controllers sent to us by 3DR, and it was... Failure, 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 failure. And we even had 3DR come out here and help us out with it. And it was just a nightmare. Yeah. And it never flew. Right. So um, I know that other people have had good experience with it. Um, there is a huge forum and community behind 3DR and the Solo and the PixHawk 2. You can learn a whole lot about it. And I would say that if they are serious about going into government contracting and offering that work, if they could figure out how to build, say, a Coax X8 or something that can carry a decent-sized gimbal, mm -hmm. they're going to be a powerhouse. Sure. I mean, that, and that's why I mentioned this, because I don't want to just say, like, oh, is the Solo useful? I think it is. It depends on the work, and government contracting work is a shoe in for it. But sure. if you're going to get serious, you know, I'd rather provide more value there to this guy and say, like, you know, if you're real, you need to start thinking about this, 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 and this. And all that is bigger bird, higher capacity payload, bigger camera for better mapping and mm -hmm. better videography. So that's thinking ahead. But even for things like real estate, if he had some opportunities there, it can be done. It can be done. Solo. It can be done. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of it, but it can be done. That doesn't mean it's not possible. If you put your mind to something and focus on it and you're out there with four or five batteries, just getting the smoothest motions in different directions, sure, it can be done. Right. I don't, you know. I mean, yeah. It's I don't recommend it, but sure, it can be done. Uh, you know, with something like real estate, if he's not doing it for government contracting work, I would say use DJI because it's a better sensor. You have more control. You have uh, more dynamic range. You can mm -hmm. shoot a lot more stuff. Sure. So, I mean, ah, just so much more flexibility with the Phantom 4 Pro. It's not even funny. So it's it's something that they can work their way up to and as I, soon yeah. as possible, mm -hmm. right? But in the meantime, make it happen. Yeah, totally. Be, be better than the equipment almost. Yeah, let me know how it goes. Really, though. Yeah. I, I want to know. So I got to tell Vic to stop posting in the Drone You Flying group. <laughs> yeah, we're shutting that sucker down. Uh, well, Jeff, thank you for the question. And guys, if you have a question, don't forget to go to askdroneu.com. Get it in. We would love to try to get it on the air for you. And uh, we appreciate all the questions that do come in. And let us know how we're doing. Leave us a review. We would really appreciate it. And let us know how we can help you out more. If you're interested in elevating your experience, if you're interested in getting the nerves out of the way and approaching every job with confidence, check out DroneU. You'll find out why a lot of other students have gone to other schools and ended up staying with us. It's really simple. With DroneU, people come to us because of what we have, what we offer. But people stay with us because how we make them feel when they fly. That's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask DroneU. DroneU.